my friends and welcome to Board Game Spotlight. I am Stephanie and my channel is Minimum Player Count. Today we are going to be doing an overview of Scapegoats. This is by Indie Boards and Cards and this is a game for three to six players. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> In Scapegoat, it is your job to either find who the scapegoat is and frame them, or if you are the scapegoat, to try to escape from the people who are trying to frame you. So this is a social deduction game where you're trying to figure out if you are the scapegoat or who the scapegoat is and trying to imprison them and get away with it type of thing. So depending on the number of players you have is that depending on the cards that you will be played. So three players, there's only three different colors that will be put out, four will be four and so on and so forth. So that can change the game a little bit. So everybody will get one of their own cards and what will happen is in the beginning of game, you will roll these dice. You have a black die and a white die. So when you roll them, you'll get numbers on both of them. So the white number is gonna show you the row and the black number is gonna show you the column. So in this case, I have a black one and a white 10. So this is telling me that the scapegoat is red. Now, if I go to the other card on this one, one and 10, this one is telling me the scapegoat is yellow. So when you're playing this game, everyone will see a color, but you cannot actually talk about what color you see. So for the majority of players, they will see the same color, but one person will see a different color because the game doesn't want them to know that they are the scapegoat. So you have to try to figure that out. In this game, you have a certain amount of actions you can do. So I'm gonna go over each of the cards that you have available actions to do. The first card is called the prepare card. Once the beginning of the game, there are two blue stones on that card that you can take. Those stones are what allow you to do a frame action. You cannot do a frame action unless you have those stones. Now, there's only two stones, so as soon as these both get taken off of the card, they'll get passed around, and that card will then turn over, and then you will have the frame slash steal. This allows you to frame one person in the game. Now, to do a successful frame operation, everybody who is not the scapegoat will have to play the same card, meaning they all agree that they want this person to go down for this job. The spy action allows you to look at another person's hand. Then you have the trade action. The trade action allows you to select one card from your hand and trade it with one other person that you select. They also have the option to trade a card that they select and give that to you. The sash action allows you to take one of the cards available on the top of the sash card and add that to your hand. You then have to replenish the stash card by putting one card from your hand back to the stash. Now it can be the same card that you had just pulled from the stash pile as we do not know. And the last action is go to the cops. This is the action that the scapegoat will try to do if they believe that they are the scapegoat and this allows them to win the game. The scapegoat can also win if somebody else thinks that they are the scapegoat and goes to the cops as well. Now, anytime you do any one of those actions, besides obviously go to the cops, which ends the game, you have to pick up the card that is on the bottom of each action. On your turn, you do have to move from where you're currently at and you have little tokens that will show your picture on them to show what your last action was and that you have to move during the your next turn. Once you pick up a card, you have to then replace a card to that space. Now in your hand, if you have any of your own cards in your hand, you have to place that out instead of choosing another card. The game does not allow you to keep your own cards as to kind of protect yourself in case you are the scapegoat. In this game, you're really trying to use like your deduction and understanding of looking at other people's cards, figuring out what other people are doing to try to understand if you are the scapegoat or who the scapegoat is. One of the ways that you can do that is by paying attention to the cards that are getting put out. Also, everyone has to have the same color of card so that they can frame somebody. So if you notice, maybe one color is coming out more than others and those are getting picked up more quickly. Or if you look at somebody else's hand and then you do an action and you see that more of these cards are coming out, you kind of just used to have to use like uh, kind of common sense, but also deduction, uh, looking at what other people are doing, seeing if they're trying to like communicate in any way uh, by 
giving each other cards more often and then looking at their hands to see what they're doing or if certain people are taking the frame tokens so that they can begin a frame job. It's a very kind of social deduction, but also a little bit of a nerve wracking kind of game because you're trying to figure out who the scapegoat is, but you're not sure if maybe you are the scapegoat. I hope you enjoyed this overview of Scapegoat by Indie Boards and Cards, and I hope to see you next time.